Hi Sugar Snaps. Dyeing can be a bit overwhelming with all the different types of fibers you can dye on, all the different types of mordants you can use, the dye plants that you can use, or natural dyes that you can try out. So today I'm going to show you how to mordant your protein fibers with aluminum sulfate and cream of tartar. A protein fiber is any type of fiber that comes from an animal. So wool comes from sheep, there's camel fiber, alpaca fiber, silk comes from silkworms, cashmere comes from goats. There's so many different types of protein fibers. I'm going to share a basic mordantine process on protein fibers with you today. But before we get started, you're going to want to scour your fiber. Here I have a video on how to scour both cellulose and protein fibers. Go ahead and watch the section on protein protein fibers to prepare your your fibers or fabric for this mordanting process. Like I said earlier, I'll be using aluminum sulfate and cream of tartar for this mordanting technique. A mordant is a mineral salt that you use to coat the fiber that you're going to be naturally dyeing and that coating helps it absorb more of the pigment from natural dyes. Check the description below for a list of all the tools and materials I will be using for this and the resources to find those yourself. To begin mordanting, you're going to need the weight of fiber or that's abbreviated to WOF. Now here I have some wool yarn, some wool fabric, and some silk fabric that I'm going to be mordanting. I have scoured these and they are all clean and ready to go, but they are wet. I have the weight of these fibers when they were dry that I used for the scouring process. So I'm going to use that weight to calculate my mordant amounts. Have a sticky note or a piece of paper handy so you can note down your numbers. And first of all, you'll, you're going to take your weight of fiber if your fibers are dry. If you've already scoured, just pull the number from your scouring process and we're going to use that number to start out with. For me, my weight of fiber is 4.9 ounces. So I'm going to use that as my starting number and that is my WOF. So now we're going to calculate that number by 10% for alum and 7% for cream of tartar. So what that looks like is 10% or 0.1 for alum and for me that comes out to 0.4 ounces. And then for cream of tartar, multiply that by 7% and that comes out to 0.3 ounces. The 10% of alum and 7% of cream, cream of tartar are suggestions. You can experiment with different ratios based on the type of fiber you're using or what you're going to be dying with. Experiment and see what kind of outcomes you come up with. I'm using a digital scale to measure out my mordants and a small jar to pour the mordant into. So I'm going to set my jar onto the scale and then tear it so that it's set to zero so that it doesn't weigh the object. It's just going to weigh the powder that I'm putting into there. And now I'm going to put on a dust mask and some gloves. When working with the aluminum sulfate, I suggest wearing protective gear so you're not breathing it in. So first I'm going to measure out the alum using a small spoon. I'm going to pour little bits at a time into my little jar until I reach the amount specified by my calculations and you'll do the same for your amount of fiber. So there's 0.4. And then do the same thing for the cream of tartar. And you can tear your jar again and pour the cream of tartar on top of the alum you've already dumped in there. And now pour some water into a small jar and then you're going to transfer your mordant powders into that jar of water. And scrape any of the excess that is stuck to the bottom into your jar. You can also pour a little bit of water back and forth until you get all the grains. Okay. Now using your spoon, stir up the alum and cream of tartar until it's dissolved or mostly dissolved. And then add a little bit of boiling water to help it dissolve all the way. Now you're going to want to fill your pot with warm water, leaving enough space at the top that you can still fit in the fibers. 
and then pour in the alum mixture, alum and cream of tartar mixture, and stir that up into your pot. So that the alum and cream of tartar is evenly distributed in the pot. And now we're going to put the fibers into the pot as well. I place those in there and I'll give it a nice stir, making sure everything has space to move around and the mordant water is touching all surfaces of my fabric and my fibers. And now turn on your stove or your hot plate or whatever it is you're using as a heat source. And I like to use a meat thermometer to place it, the probe into the water. And you want your water to reach 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll turn on the heat and usually I use about medium high heat to slowly raise it to 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then once it reaches that point, you're going to hold that temperature for 45 minutes. As the pot is heating, be sure to stir it occasionally so you're rotating the fibers and they're mordanting evenly. Once your fibers have been mordanting in the bath for 45 minutes at 180 degrees, you can leave the fibers in the pot and allow the pot to cool. I like to leave my fibers in overnight because the added soaking sometimes increases the depth of shade of the natural dye that I dye it in. When you're ready to remove the fibers from the pot, lift them out, squeeze out the excess mordant water, and then rinse them out in a similar temperature water. You can store mordanted fibers wet in the fridge for up to five days in a airtight Ziploc bag or container. If you want to dry your fibers out, lay them out flat, allow them to fully dry, and then store them in a paper bag or somewhere dry and cool, and they will last several years ready and mordanted for your natural dye projects. In coming weeks, I'll be sharing more natural dye videos, so subscribe below to get notified of any new videos that I publish. If there's something specific you would like me to try dyeing with, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to experiment with them. If you want more textile and fiber arts resources, information, and inspiration, sign up for my email list. You can find the link to that in the description below. I send out tons of resources and inspiration on a twice a month basis. Like this video if you like natural dyeing and want more natural dyeing videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Happy dyeing. <laughs> Happy dyeing. <laughs>